Initiated startup sequence. Hey everybody, my name is Eric. Welcome to the channel. Um, finally got my antenna in the mail today. Uh, Amazon Two Day Prime came through, and after much research and deliberation on my part, I decided to go with the GE Outdoor slash Attic Mount Pro antenna. Not sure what makes this a professional antenna. Um, but of course, it's got all the standard verbiage on the side of it, um, enhanced high definition. Um, for all brands, superior signal, whole home ready, which is what I plan to do, uh, use this one signal and distribute it throughout the house. Uh, 4K Ultra HD, full HD 1080p, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so this works within 70 miles. That's probably a little bit of an overstatement, but um, it's nice to know this is going to be a little bit of overkill uh, for my needs here in the house. When I went online, and you're going to want to do this too, to figure out uh, where your TV signals are. Um, mine are mostly north here in the house, which means I can use this directional antenna, point it north, kind of fine tune it a little bit once I get um, get it mounted, and uh, I should be good to go. Most of my channel or uh, towers are also probably about 10 or 15 miles away from here uh, at the most. So this 70 mile signal, 70 mile antenna is definitely way uh, overkill. Uh, for my needs, but since I'm going to be putting this in the attic, um, the roofing material will definitely cut down on a lot of the signal strength coming in, so this should give me enough of uh, an antenna reception-wise to uh, to get in the, every channel that I want, and maybe even some that I'm not expecting to get. So uh, I'm going to pair this with a preamp, and um, like I said, mount this in the attic, and it should be able to serve the entire house uh, with a good TV signal. Again, probably a little bit of overkill, but it's nice to actually have that because if later on down the line I go to start troubleshooting some stuff, I should be able to weed out whether or not my antenna is an issue. Uh, and again, this was relatively inexpensive on Amazon, even with the free uh, the two-day shipping. Um, I forget what I paid for, but believe it or not, the 70-mile antenna was actually less expensive than the 60-mile one was, so uh, go figure that one out. Uh, after doing uh, reading the reviews on Amazon, a lot of people were saying they had some issues getting this thing put together. Uh, the end instructions are a little bit vague, uh, to say the least, and because a lot of these parts look the same, it's definitely a little bit interesting trying to figure out how to get them all put together, orientated this the proper way, and so on, based off of the little instruction booklet that you get. Uh, from GE. So what I'm going to do is uh, in this video is break this thing down real quick and then we'll put it together step by step so that way you shouldn't have any issues figuring out um, how to get your antenna put together too if this is the one you decide to go with. Later on down the road hopefully we'll get up in the attic together. I'm going to show you how to mount this thing properly, run some wires. and uh, But in the meantime give me a few minutes I'm going to get this thing broken down uh, and then we'll put it back together. Be right back. All right, we're back. Um, well, let's start putting this thing together. The first thing you want to do is basically get this part here. Is it called? I don't see the main boom, which is pretty much what everything else is going to mount onto. Um, and you got your little uh, jack here for the plug your coax cable in. Uh, RG6, I think is what it's called. That way it feeds the rest of the house your antenna signal. Um, but the first thing you want to do is notice up here at this part. There's two little prongs or bolts sticking out with some nuts on them. And what you want to do is carefully remove those two nuts. 
And now this is where a lot of people mess up too. Underneath those two nuts are going to be a couple of lock washers. Be very careful, you don't want to lose those. And now you're going to kind of coax those into coming off. And they're little tiny lock washers that go underneath those nuts, between the nut and uh, this part here, to basically lock those from ever coming off. This part here is called the VHF dipole. And basically what it is, it's two parts individually. And what you're going to want to do is put them together. There's basically one end slides into the other. Now there's little black caps on the parts that you don't slide into to prevent it from putting together wrong. But basically you're going to take one part, one end, slide it into the other, and you'll end up with something that looks like that. You have a little gap in between here. So take your main boom and hold it this way with your bolts facing up. Your, your uh, output jack is also going to be facing up. And get your VHF boom and hold it this way with, this, with the split part facing up. Basically you're just going to slide this into there. You're going to have to flex this a little bit in order to get it in. Basically just slide it through and fit it down there into the grooves. And you're going to slide one of the bolt posts through the holes on the one side and the, through the hole on the other side. Like that. Kind of snug it down real good. Also note there's also another little screw hole here on the back side to hold the bottom part down. But um, Take your lock washers, one and two, put them on your bolts there and then snug those down with those little nuts that you took off. Get your little pliers or something. Just going to tighten those up pretty good. Those lock washers will prevent the nuts from ever backing off. Or at least that's the plan. Trying to over tighten this. Again, this little dipole is made of aluminum, which makes it nice and lightweight, but you can certainly over tighten it as well. It'll crush the dipole. It's going to have a little bit of a snuggling down effect. When you get these nuts tightened up nice and good, but again, you don't want to actually crush the dipole. You don't need to be that forceful with it, especially with those lock washers on there holding it together. Now, again, on this back side here, you got a little hole too. I'm going to take one of these screws. Now, um, there's two kinds of screws that you're going to get. You're going to get a longer one and one, two, three, four short ones. You're also going to get two more nuts and bolts with your hardware pack. Set those to the side, set the four short screws off to the side. You just want the longer screw for this one. And basically on this back side here where the screw hole is, the part that's not split, the part that's solid that runs straight through, if everything went together nicely you should be able to fit this screw right through the hole and into the main boom like so. Do some finagling around with it a little bit to get up in there and just tighten that down. You can certainly use a cordless screwdriver if you have one. However, again, you don't want to crush the dipole. And so by doing this by hand, I'm able to kind of get a better feel for what I'm doing, how tight it's getting and stuff. I don't want to murder my antenna. Um, when you put this together, I was showing you this end up for assembly purposes, but um, where your uh, coax output jack is, basically that's going to face down when you actually go to install this. Um, so next step is you're going to find a bunch of these little triangle pieces, and they're all marked. Um, you've got some really small ones. Here. These should be labeled A. 
got some next bigger ones. Those should be labeled B. And then the biggest ones are labeled C. See the label right there. Um, if we look in our booklet, it tells us in the main boom you'll see the letter C. Blah, 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 blah. The C from the dipole should be facing up, which is the letter C on here. So again, our output jack, which is that little part right there, should be facing down when it's installed. So you want the letter, which you're not going to be able to see in the camera, but basically you want the triangle part of this thing facing up when you go to put it in. So. You'll see on the side of this thing there's three little tab slots. The biggest ones go in the back, like so. The next bigger ones, which are B's, will go here. Oops. And the tiniest one, the C, will go here. Again, all with the triangle parts facing up. Your output jack is facing down, your triangle is going to be facing up. So let's start with the biggest ones first, which are C. And when you put them in there, you should see there's little bolt holes going through. And it takes a little bit of wiggling around, but you're going to want to basically have, be able to see all the way through from the top down with the, when the holes all line up. You also notice too, on the bottom side here, of these bolt holes, there's little, it's kind of hexagonal. Uh, it's a hexagonal cutout where the bolt will actually, or sorry, the nut will actually fit up into the housing here and uh, provide you a nice solid tight fit. So take your couple, you know, like I said earlier, you got a couple of these bolts and tiny nuts. You take one of the nuts, put it, stick it up here in the bottom part. Just kind of hold it in there, it's going to want to fall out. And then insert your bolt through the top part. And again, you're going to have to kind of finagle it a little bit because the, there we go. You need to get the holes to line up with the holes in here in order for it to go together properly. And you just kind of tighten it down. And I can feel that nut being drawn up by the bolt. And again, don't need to kill it with tension. Just get it nice and snug down pretty good. All right, you can see. Maybe that the bolt has drawn the nut up into that hole, and because it's a hexagonal cutout, basically the, you don't need a wrench for the nut. The housing itself holds that in place while you're tightening it down. Get the other side, do the same thing. Kind of get it in there, line it up pretty good. Doesn't like to play really nice as far as getting lined up, but as long as you can see light through it. You should be able to get it pieced together and to just kind of mess with it a little bit to get that bolt to go all the way through. Again, just put the nut down on the bottom, put the bolt through the top, kind of messing with that to get the holes to line up. I think we got it, and we'll tighten that down. All right. B and A are a little bit easier because there's no nut or bolt to go in there. It's basically a screw. But you're gonna do the same thing. Make sure your little triangle part is facing up, um, and you should be left with the four little screws. Basically, use those little screws. Line it up so you can. You're not going to be able to see through the hole because it screws down into the housing instead of having a bolt going all the way through. But you're going to be able to kind of see well enough to get the screw through. And the screw will certainly kind of self center itself as well. Get tighten that up. Snug and firm, but not, don't go killing it. Otherwise, you'll strip it out, and then you got to deal with that. So 
All right, we'll do the other side now. I'm actually upside down right now, which is why the triangles are facing down. But since we're screwing these up through the bottom, it's easier to do it this way. And do the same thing with the two tiniest ones. The two tiniest ones go on the very end down here. One of the things you might have noticed when you were looking at my um, antenna chart is to the south of me there are some more antennas to the south that this might or might not pick up. But those are actually duplicates of ones to the north. I think they're NBC and Fox, which I've already got an NBC and Fox station to the north of me. So even if I don't get those two stations, I'm not really missing out on anything because they're just duplicates. Alright, we'll do this last one here. And you gotta mess with it a little bit to kind of get it in there. But once you start it, the screws will self-center themselves. Alright. Hmm. Okay. There you go. Starting to look like an antenna. Alright, the next thing you want to deal with, let's see what are these called here? The reflector. Alright, so I'm going to have these little plastic pieces here. Which basically slide together like this. I'll go over this again a little bit better in a second, but they kind of go together like so. And you put these rods through. To act as your reflector. Now on each one of these rods you're going to notice there's an indentation in the middle. It's hard to see here in the camera, but there's an indentation and then two little like pinholes. Not pinholes, but like punch holes. Dots. They don't go all the way through, but they're dots. Um, but it kind of, instead of being nice and round, it kind of flattens out at that point. But the good part is you'll notice on these little holes they're kind of oblong as well too so that's basically how you're going to fit these reflector rods through. There's also tabs in the center. What you're going to want to do is basically pull up on each one of these little tabs to allow the rod to slide through. Let me see if I can get you one real quick so you can see. Alright, you see when I'm trying to put the rod in, it hits that tab, so you're going to want to pull up on that tab in order to get, well, there you go, use your thumb or your finger, whatever is strongest, to pull up and you'll get that rod all the way through. And basically, you're just going to kind of slide it up until you hit something, you're going to have to spin it around. So you can squeeze it all the way through. Use those little punch marks to figure out where you're at as far as being centered. You'll be able to see one punch on each side. That way you know you're centered up nice and good. And then what I've been doing is use, putting the flat part of the reflector rod, putting that against the part here that's actually touching the rod itself. Don't think it makes any difference either way how you do it, as long as it's in there. And this isn't going anywhere once you take your thumb off of that tab, but eh, I don't know. It just seems like that's the way it kind of wants to go, so I'll do it that way. Again, kind of run that through, pull up on here, and slide your tab 
slide your rod all the way in. Center her up pretty good. Spin the rod so the flat parts facing towards the tab. And it'll kind of settle itself right in there, not really move or turn or anything at all. So, and then you get the joy of doing all the rest of these. I think, based on the instructions, this was probably the most confusing part for most people. But once you get it down, and it's going to be a little awkward the first couple ones you do, trying to figure out how to pull down on that tab while you're sliding these rods in. can be a little bit funky at first, but um, as long as you have a little bit of dexterity in your fingers and somewhat good eyesight, my eyesight's horrible, you should be able to get them in there. Alright, there's that one there. And one more on this side. starting to look like something here. Those are all nice and even. Alright, let's do the other side. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to leave me a message. I'm going to update this channel periodically and pretty um, pretty busy at first as I decide to quote unquote cut the cord get rid of cable TV here at the house my wife pays the bills and it drives her nuts how much money we send to the cable company each month because we've got, well, we've got the TV the phone and the internet all going to Cox cable, Cox Communications So there's several hundred bucks each month. So not that much, but close to it. Once I get this TV straight, I'm going to go ahead and focus on the, uh, the telephone. I think the internet is something we're going to be stuck with. But if I can figure out how to get TV free over the air and use like a Kodi box or Sling or um, Sony's TV service to get the rest of the channels um, I can focus on getting some better cheaper phone packages some VOIP voice over internet protocol I haven't really looked into that yet but just for a second or two so that's going to be the next step after I get all this video stuff straight. My thumb's getting tired. Alrighty. There we go. Alright. Part three. What we do is put these two together. You'll notice there's some little slots in the bottom here. There's a slot and then a tab, group tab, same thing on the other side except the reverse and they should fit nicely into each other like so. Put on. And then through that you're going to put your main boom here. And you're going to notice a couple bolt holes on the top and the bottom. Well basically it's the yeah, top and the bottom. And you're going to slide this through here like so. And these little bolts look like that with a washer. Put the washer on the top. 
and it should go through. It should. And lock that down. I'm going to do another one on the bottom side as well, too. Same thing, bolt with a washer on there. Dial that in like so. Alrighty. And now the last step for now. I'm gonna mount this thing. Let me get that on here. Now there's some bolt holes here in the mast itself. Well, it looks weird. This is also another part that looks kind of funky. How do you get this on here? There's no clear way of doing it. What I've figured out is what they want to do is when you look at this, there's like a notch some, with some teeth on it cut out. Basically that's what's going to hold this whole thing together when you put that U-bolt on there. The teeth actually cut into the mast and hold it in place. So, get your U-bolt and these two little butterfly nuts. You're going to slide the U-bolt through the back end of your mast here. All the way through. You want the point, the open ends, facing down, which would be the groove part. Nope, that's not correct. Basically, want, sorry, they know it's complicated. The groove part's facing up, and then slide your U-bolt down. That's what your mask goes into. Sorry about that. Tighten these little butterfly nuts on here carefully. You don't want to bend any of your holes. And at first you're not going to... You might not see what, what are we doing here. It's not going to really make much sense, but just tighten those butterfly bolts down almost all the way. What I would do is hold it this way, with your notches facing down. Just up a little bit. And what you want to do is fit that mask into there. Like so. And again, keep an eye on, remember, up and down, top and bottom. Your coax output's down here, so you basically want your mast pointing that way, if you're mounting it this way. Alright, get in there. Now, over tighten these. Well, there we go. And just for now, kind of tighten these up a little bit. Again, it's not a whole lot of security. It's loose, slides around a lot. But once you tighten her down, pretty good. She's pretty solid and firm. This will allow you to basically fine tune in once you get the mass mounted, dial it in really good, what direction you want it. Um, so that's it. Just put together. Next step is going to be to get up in the attic and mount her up. Um, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please um, ask and I'll reply to them as soon as I can. And hopefully this does a trick. And um, on to the next step. Thanks guys. Bye bye.